as an environmental learning center. Two year, or about four years ago, we changed its image and changed the scope of its operations to encompass the entire state, therefore becoming the Colorado Science Center. The mission of the Colorado Science Center is actually to stimulate public awareness and understanding of the role of science and technology in our lives. We are the only hands-on science museum in Colorado. Our philosophy is oriented towards participatory exhibits and programs rather than collections and artifacts. Our philosophy is basically that of the old ancient Chinese proverb, if I hear, I forget, if I see, I remember, if I do, I understand. Hello, I'd like to welcome you to the Colorado Science Center. I'm going to take you around to just a few of the exhibits to show you how they work and tell you a little bit about them. And then in about 15 minutes, you're going to be on your own to go and explore all of the exhibits that we have here. But I want you to know how to work these correctly so that when you get to go on by yourself, go by yourself, you'll find out that science can be a lot of fun. And if at any time you have a question, my name is Sharon, and I want you just to ask the question and we'll, then we'll go from there, okay? We're going to start with this exhibit right here, which is called a Chinese Compass Chariot. Now a compass, like you're more familiar with, looks like this, a magnetic compass. This is a compass is used to help you find the direction or locate the directions if you're traveling. It's a good piece of equipment to take with you, especially if you go camping like in the mountains and places like that, because it has all of the directions on it written on there. And the needle on the magnetic compass will always point north, which is in this direction. Okay? Well, about 2,000 years ago, the Chinese people needed something to help guide them as they traveled across the desert. So they designed the very first compass, and it looks something like this. This is a magnetic compass. This compass was put together with gears. These are called the gears and the teeth of the gears. The gears hook to the wheels, and the main gear hooks to the goddess that they placed right at the very top of the compass. Now the goddess stood 11 feet up in the air, like almost up to our ceiling, and she acted like the needle on the magnetic compass, except she pointed south, which is in this direction. When the people were ready to travel, they would hook their horses up to the handle of the chariot, and if you watch the goddess, no matter which way, they would pull their chariot, the goddess always stays pointing in the same direction, which is south. Okay? Now the original chariot, like I said, stood 11 feet high. It was 10 feet wide and 12 feet long, so it was really huge. And it was pretty nifty too, huh? Wasn't it? Well, the Chinese people, several hundred years after the Chinese compass chariot, they also designed the magnetic compass that we use today. Okay? The next exhibit is right over here by what looks like to be a purple sandbox. So it has to do with sound. Sound is created when there is a vibration. A vibration is something that moves back and forth. If you would take your fingers and just very gently put them right here on your throat. Now don't pinch. Just lay them very gently on your throat. And I want you to say with me, Colorado Science Center. Okay? Are you ready? Colorado Science Center. Could you feel something vibrate in there? Could you feel something tickle your fingers? Well, that's a vibration, and that's how we talk. That vibration travels through, our ear, through the air to our ears, and that's the way we hear. Well, we're going to set these plates into vibration. We want them to move back and forth. To do that, if there's sand on the plate, you're going to take an eraser and just very gently erase the sand off of the plate that you want to make vibrate. Then, taking a salt or a pepper shaker, you want to sprinkle a nice, even layer of sand all over the plate, okay? Just like this. If you get too much sand, it's not going to work as well. Then you want to take a bow, and this is a bow. You want to use some rosin on the, on the strings, and this brown stuff right here is called rosin. So you want to rosin up the bow just like this. Then holding the bow straight up and down, you want to strike the plate in the same spot each time, very gently. You want to make that plate vibrate. Now you can hear the plate vibrate because you can hear the noise coming from the plate. You can see that the plate was vibrating. 
because the sand that we sprinkled all over the top has danced all around and has formed a pretty figure on top of the plate. Okay, now the littler ones can come and stand up on the box over here, all right? And if you strike the plate again, you can also feel the plate vibrate by just very gently putting your finger on the plate. You have to do it very gently when it's, when it's making the noise and you'll be able to feel the vibration, okay? Each plate will give you a different, different series of pictures and you can change the figure or the picture by striking the plate along the edge at a different spot, okay? There'll be plenty of time for you to come back and explore all of these, but we're going to go on to the next exhibit, which is right over here by what looks like a red sandbox. Okay. This exhibit has to do with pendulums. A pendulum is something that swings back and forth like on the, at the bottom of a grandfather's clock or a cuckoo clock, that thing that swings back and forth is called a pendulum. I have one at my house, but it hangs up. It's a small one. A small one. It hangs on the wall. Yeah. Well, that pendulum is necessary in order to keep that clock working. I've made a pendulum out of this brush right here by holding it right up here at the top and letting it swing back and forth. We have two pendulums here. We have a long pendulum that works from the top of the bar and the Y of the chain all the way down to the bottom of the box. And the path of that pendulum is always back and forth in this manner. Okay. The short pendulum works from the circle right here to the bottom of the box. And the path of that pendulum is always back and forth this way. So the paths of the two pendulums, when they swing by themselves, cross to form a T or an X or an airplane or anything you want to pretend it to be, okay? But the fun part comes in when we let the two pendulums work together. So to get the sand off of the top of the table, we use this brush and erase it, just sweep it right off of there. Put two scoops of sand in the bucket and then start the pendulum flow, swinging, start the pendulums working together from a corner. And there must be something plugging up the hole. Periodically the hole gets plugged up. When that happens you have to empty the bucket and start all over again. It's working good now, it's working good now isn't it? Sure is. Well let's put another couple of scoops in. Okay, here we go. Now if you'll notice the paths are no longer straight, but they're curved. The pendulum will make a path and then it will go back and trace the path it just made only backwards, then make a new path. Now it's making a new path, so let's watch. Because right now it's going to start going backwards and tracing the path that it's just made. Okay, and then it'll make a new path and it will just continue like that. Okay? So you'll have to come back and try this one in a few minutes. This exhibit is called Glass Bead Rainbows. And the purpose of the exhibit is to show you that the rainbow, or spectrum, as it's properly called, is actually a circle. But because of the way we stand on the, on the surface of the earth, when the sun comes out after it's been raining, we see the rainbow only as an arch across the sky. Okay? To operate this, all you have to do is push the button, Turn the light on, and you want to hold the light up close to the um, window, and then by moving your body around and by moving the light around, you're going to see a circular spectrum or a circular rainbow. Now, it's not going to be on the glass, but it's going to be like just hanging right out here in midair. And you'll see that the spectrum, the rainbow, is actually a complete circle. So therefore, if you were going to try to find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, You'll never find it because that rainbow just keeps going around and around and around. This is called a resonance pendulum. This is a 14-foot pendulum with 250 pounds of concrete in a metal case at the bottom. That weighs even more than I do. So that's pretty heavy, isn't it? Yeah. Well, what we man would, have to would be able to lift it. Yeah, a muscle man would be able to lift that. What would you say? 
Superman probably can't even. Superman might have trouble, huh? Mm -hmm. no, well, well, Superman can lift it with his finger. Yeah, Superman could probably lift it with his finger. Okay, well what we want to do with this pendulum is we want to make the pendulum resonate. We want to make it swing back and forth. Okay, there's only one way in which to do that correctly. There are two ways that you can do it, but they're not allowed. And one of those ways is by stepping across my fence and pushing that pendulum. You can't step across my fence, okay? Nor can you take the string and swing it out and wrap the string around the cable and then pull on it, okay? That's not allowed either. So there's only one way to get that pendulum into motion. Magnet. And that's right, the magnet. Huh? We, want, we want to gently swing the string out and let this tiny magnet stick right to the side of the pendulum. And all you have to do is swing it out very gently. If you swing it out really hard, all you're going to do is break my magnet. And then the exhibit's not going to work. So we want to swing it out very gently. Then you're going to start, whoops, you're going to start to pull very gently on the string. If you pull, whoops, <laughs> if you pull too hard, that's what's going to happen. You're going to pull the magnet off. And I think our string is just a little too short in order to get this going. Okay. Once the pendulum starts to move towards you, you want to pull. As the pendulum starts to move away, you're going to let it take the string with it. Okay? We may have to do this again, guys, because the string is too short and I'm, it's not working. Okay. There we go. Okay, and you can see that it takes just a very gentle little pull, okay? Now the fun part comes in when you get a friend to hook their magnet at a right angle to yours at the side and then getting into rhythm working with your friend and getting into the rhythm with the, the pendulum, you can get the pendulum to swing in a circle instead of just back and forth, okay? There's a resonant pendulum on just about every playground that I know of. It's a piece of playground equipment and everybody likes to play on it. Even I like to play on this pendulum, but we call it something else. Does anybody know what piece of playground equipment is actually a pendulum? A swing. That's exactly right. A swing is a pendulum, and what we do on the pendulum is to swing back and forth. This exhibit is called Bird in the Cage, and the object is to come and stare at one of these birds. And by staring, it means you have to keep your eyes wide open, and you have to look straight ahead at that bird. You can't blink your eyes, you can't close your eyes, you can't look to see what anybody else is doing. You have to stare at that bird for about 30 seconds or a half a minute for the littler ones until you count to 30, okay? When that time is up, you want to look right into the bird cage because you're going to see a bird the same shape as this bird, maybe with a bright white light around it, inside the cage. Now, it's not going to sit still, it may just sort of flit around. And you won't see it in a pretty red like that. When you look at the red bird, and you look into the cage, you're going to see sort of a bright whitish, bluish color bird or maybe yellowish, greenish color, okay? Shall we try it to see if it's going to work? Okay, you're going to stare at the bird and when I say look into the cage, I want everyone to look right over here, okay? So are you ready? You gotta keep your eyes open. Ready, get set, go. Look into the cage. Can anybody see a bird in there? Yeah. Yeah, who saw a bird in there? Yeah, what color was your bird? White. Red. Green. Yours is Mine sort of green? Reddish. Reddish? Mine is blue. Red. Sort of bluish? Reddish. Reddish? Okay, well that's good. Everybody saw the bird then. Don't be upset if you didn't see the bird. Just come back and try it again, okay? And you know that you have to stare at it for a pretty long time. Then you want to try the green bird. 
And then you're going to want to try the rest of the geometric shapes on the wall over here. This is called delayed vision. And right now, I'd like to have everybody watch the ball, the large ball, at the far end of the table. I'm going to pull the lever back and keep the lever back to keep that ball moving. And I'd like for you to take your hands and show me which way that ball is moving. Can you show me with your hands that it's just going back and forth, left to right, okay? Well, in order for this to work, you can, you can stop doing that now. In order for this to work, you must come and sit down in the chair and line your eyes up so you have one eye looking at that large ball through the green filter and one eye looking at the ball through the blank space. And then you have to hold really still, okay? Then you're going to reach through the left, um, left hand side here and pull the lever back. Keep watching the ball, Justin, and in a few seconds you're going to see that ball do something else other than just go back and forth. Justin, what do you see the ball do? Going around. Going around. He sees the ball going in a circle. Is it going in a circle? No. No, it isn't. It's just going back and forth. But if you, when you come and get your eyes lined up correctly, and that's very important, you're going to see the big ball go like this in a circle behind the little ball, okay? Once you get the, pa the ball going one direction, then you want to shift your eyes over and observe what happens to the ball. This is called You and Me Mirrors, and the object is for two people to come and sit down in the chairs opposite, just like let's have only one person sit in the chair, okay? So let's let this guy and this gal sit in the chairs, okay? All right. The rest of you, that's it. The rest of you can just stand right there. Okay. Now then, what you need to do is you have to come and sit down, and you have to line your faces up so that you have one person's eyes and nose and mouth fit right inside the person's eyes, nose, and mouth on the opposite side. Okay. And then you have to hold really still. So let's see. Do you have your eyes, nose, and mouth lined up? I do. Pretty good, okay. Now everybody hold really still because these lights that shine on your face, these knobs on the tabletop control the lights that shine on your faces, okay? And by dimming and brightening the lights, we can make all different kinds of strange things happen. Who do we have sitting here? What's your name? Chad. Chad, okay. When Chad looks into the mirror, instead of seeing Chad, he is going to see, wait till I get this light working. Uh-uh, there we go. Who does Chad see when he looks into the mirror? He doesn't see himself, huh? I see Lisa. You see Lisa, yeah. Well, when you look into a mirror, I thought you were supposed to see yourself. How about that, okay? I see part of it. Yeah, well, we can get one person's head to come over onto the shoulders of the person on the opposite side by playing with the knobs and brightening the lights and dimming them. We can get half of this person's face and half of this person's face over here. Over here. Let's see what we can get here. <laughs> yeah. You gotta hold still. You gotta hold right still. Keep your nose right in there, okay? <laughs> All right? And at this exhibit only, you can't do this anywhere else in my museum, but if you stick your tongue out, you can make it come out of the mouth of the person on the opposite side, okay? <laughs> These are just a few of the things that you can make happen at the You and Me Mirrors. Now, I've told you about a few of the exhibits, okay? You're going to be on your own now to go and explore all of the exhibits that we have. And if you have a question, you're going to need to come and find me. And who can tell me what my name is? Sharon. Sharon, okay. Now you're on your own to go and explore and have fun. Thanks. You're welcome. No.
The Science Center is located in City Park in Denver on the west shore of the lake in the old historic pavilion building. We have classes and special programs at the center developing uh, community interest and educational objectives. Classes have been designed for children for through the ninth grade to give them an introduction to the different areas in science. These classes are designed to bring out the innate curiosity that you'll find in children of all ages. Also by coming down and exploring the Science Center you'll see that science can be fun for everyone. I would like all of you to come visit the Colorado Science Center. We're located on the west shore of the lake in City Park, directly west across the lake from the Museum of Natural History. If you cannot catch us at the Science Center, do come and see us at the shopping malls.